Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of my Out of the Park Baseball 21 series with the Colorado Rockies and I know I've been posting a while though I did mention that posting would be pretty sporadic because of kind of my situation right now so um, of course won't be posting that much but I try to get a video out um, when I can because of course um, I mean this is really the only time I'm playing uh, Out of the Park Baseball anyway so um, it's fun to you know go ahead and, and just really play the game. Um, so we're here um, after me actually not playing the game for a long time, really just since uh, the last time I posted the video. So we're going to go ahead and see where we're at, and we are at the end of the 2021 season, so the second season of the series. Um, we finished um, fourth in the NL West, just above the Giants, kind of middling towards that not absolutely awful territory. Um, actually, a lot of teams this year weren't really that bad, except for the Royals, who were absolutely awful. So that probably explains a little bit of... Um, and everyone being uh, in the 70s really here, I mean, I know Central, not many wins, a lot of teams, you know, not fantastic teams, um, not really many bad teams this year, but um, a lot of a lot of kind of middle ground teams there, so kind of decent season for us, you know, I'm not, you know, very disappointed or anything with this, I um, wasn't really expecting, of course, much, we're still very much rebuilding, look at the projected win last year, and we played two above uh, what we, our expected record would have been, so not anything crazy there and then we'll be having a pick somewhere in the middle of the draft this year so maybe I'm gonna just keep on building keep on uh, trying to build our team up and uh, see what we can do here in the next few years as I'm kind of not sure the direction we're gonna take so it will be interesting not only for you um, but for me as well so looking here um, we're gonna of course do what we always do recap the team stats for the year, so we're gonna be first here looking at um, the hitters on our team, which is what we usually do. So, um, catching tandem of Contreras and Walters, they were pretty good this year. Of course, Walters had a fantastic year last year, um, a career year at the plate, really. Um, of course, he is a defensive specialist back there, extremely good. Uh, wow, he actually uh, played some center field this year, which is kind of interesting. I don't know how that happened. Uh, his ratings there actually aren't the worst so yeah he was good um William Contreras our um, rule 5 draft pick he was even better um projects to be much better to the plate not nearly as good um defensively Walters had a very high Babbitt which is um probably contributed a lot to his offensive production but uh so he won't probably do that I'm sure that eventually Contreras will take over as the starting catcher pretty much and Walters will turn into more of kind of our defense first backup um, first base was the disaster. Apostle was very bad in his um, Rule 5 drop pick here, although we're going to keep around and probably um, give him some time in the minors next year. Um, he still has a good offensive potential, so we'll go ahead and, of course, keep rolling with him. Jake Lamb, kind of a mess season from him. OBS plus, way below league average. Um, again, a really low bad up killed him. First base was not very good for us. Jeter Downs, however, was extremely good for us. Kind of high bad up. I'm in the 350s, but of course, as we've learned, Coors Fields is the Babip King and is undefeated. Um, so that may not be a crazy number for him as we go forward here at Coors. Pretty good season from him. I got caught stealing a lot. I don't know why we're being so aggressive on the base pass. And he is pretty good um, at stealing, so I don't really understand that, but whatever. I mean, not really going to fix anything with that now. And Ryan McMahon, he was pretty decent. Um, and very limited at bats and kind of a backup infield role where he played a lot of second base, some first base, pinch out off the bench I assume, a lot against left handed, um, or excuse me, left handed batter against right handed pitching, Bobby Dalback, he struggled in his first year, just a lot of kind of struggling around here, Colton Welker, he actually did not struggle and was pretty good for us, but Dalback was actually pretty good too, um, of course you'd expect more of the bat from him, but uh, I kind of forget a lot that he's pretty decent defensively at first base. At third base, I should say. So, again, not good with the bat, but pretty good with the glove out there. And um, above replacement level there. Colton Welker, he actually was pretty surprising. His ratings are pretty much all kind of meh. But um, he did turn in a pretty good season here. Um, kind of interested um, to see him going forward. I'm not sure he does long-term slot with the team. But um, for now, he is just fine. Brendan Rodgers, he put out a short for us this year. Um, not fantastic defensively at shortstop, but... Um, he'll do it for now. His bat, I'm sure, plays pretty well as a shortstop. Um, pretty good season from him again. Bad again, you know, it's going to be high at Coors Field. And a pretty decent season from him, just below league average, but we'll take that every time from him. 
um, so far. And then kind of our corner outfielders who we brought up last year, um, and they kind of struggled. So some of them had some pretty good success this year. Zach Bornstein, he raked in AAA this year, and we brought him up kind of as the left-handed batter. First guy off the bench against right-handed pitching, and he ex- performed extremely well. High bat, but again, which of course is a theme in Corvus Field, but I mean, he was fantastic for us. Um, and kind of limited bats there. David Dahl, of course, he is just always a one-man wrecking crew for us. Not <laughs> the season that he had last year, of course, but still extremely good season for him. Um, Garrett Hampson, um, not a very good season for him. He's kind of just kind of a filler player, to be honest, at this point. Mainly an infielder, can play some center field. Not particularly good defensively at center field. Um, he absolutely raked um, when he was down in AAA this year. So, you know, I decided to call him up because we had holes. I'm to fill. He slotted in there at center field, and of course didn't play that well about replacement level. But again, he's just a filler player. That I don't care much about. We'll, you know, be trying to upgrade the team as we go on. So he'll probably be around for a little bit more so he's under team control. But um, he, I'm gonna, you know, if we're a good team, I would hope that he wouldn't be getting many at bats. And then here, Sam Hilliard. He pretty much played 100 games for us. Was pretty good in those at bats. He was another guy who just absolutely raked into play. Decided to give him a shot. And uh, he performed well. Um, Hilliard and Bornstein, at least I believe it was these two, yeah, they both struggled last year when I brought them up. And then it was just not the case this year. Jorge Ona was the kind of guy who I thought could be a corner guy like them who comes up and does pretty well. Because he was playing very well in AAA. He was, has been, had a good track record, record hitting and previously in the minors, but and pretty limited bats, he's pretty awful, um, to say the least. So, of course, he's under team control, and he'll have uh, much more time to um, kind of get those ABs and stuff. So, I'm not concerned about that. We'll see if he's able to develop into anything. Of course, uh, a guy like that, of course, field should be plenty, plenty good enough. So, now we're going to go ahead and he look at pitching, where um, it was kind of a disaster, as you'd expect. Um, Gudo was very bad. Um, Bowden and Gonzalez. It's very concerning to see that Gonzalez was bad. Of course, he's the international acquisition we made. Um, he's not getting paid much um, throughout kind of um, his career here. Only four and a half, uh, which isn't even a lot for an elite reliever. Um, but still, he was very bad. Hopefully, he can get better. Freeland, he was kind of meh at this point. What do you expect? He's just kind of a filler guy at the back of the, of the rotation, at least a good rotation. And Antonio Santos, he came in, had some, I think probably had a good first start, and then just was awful after that. Um, Rollison, he's okay for us. I mean, a lot of these guys are kind of the sex amount of guys I'm really banking on anything. They're just filler, um, especially with the amount of pitching injuries we had this year. Brett Conine, I got him from Houston, of course. He was meh for us. And Monte, a lot of, a lot of meh, pretty much, I think. The Red Feldman, he was... Um, guy with a super high year already, but um, walked a lot of guys. But I'm sure that uh, over time his control will, uh, um, will he'll get a handle on that and be better. Um, Sensatello is actually pretty good for us. Um, below four FIP ERA plus of 124. He's a guy who I um, kind of look for in the future. We have two more years of him, so um, you know maybe he could be a good trade chip on the end of the season if teams are desperate for pitching and we're not contending. Cause I don't really know if we would be. Um, Jairo him, Diaz, he was good for us. He's been a pretty um, decent reliever for us through this time. Too. Junior Hernandez, or Fernandez, excuse me. He, of course, we acquired him via trade last season. Um, yeah, no, it was last season. Yeah, we acquired him via trade last season. Um, he, I don't believe he started the season with the Major League Club, but he was extremely good in the 29 innings that he got. A FIP of 2.37, strike out tons of guys, walking a decent amount, but not allowing any homers, not a lot of hard contact. I'm um, pretty nuts, honestly. So, pretty good showing there from the young uh, reliever that we have. And, you know, maybe possibly he could be a starter. He doesn't have the best stamina, but his stuff certainly um, is electric. So, and that's pretty much the team pitching wise. Um, overall, I mean, you know, didn't really expect much out of the season. Um, you know, just really building forward. We had some um, pretty key guys make debuts this year. Tristan Cassius, he had um, short stint um, with the team at some point. He was good pretty much all year in AAA. And so he'll be coming up. Tramel, he is a fantastic defensively, mostly a left fielder, but he's interesting with his on-base goes. Tyler Nevin, 
Um, Paredes here, he's a kind of an interesting um, pitching prospect that we have. Most likely, I'd probably want him out of the bullpen. Um, I think that would be beneficial for him since he um, has a few good pitches, but um, I don't know if his control combination with that would lead him to being a fantastic starter. Um, Tapia, he's kind of a little odd right now in here. Um, wasn't actually awful um, in his major league time this year. It wasn't awful last year, but again, if we're trying to build, we don't want just not awful players, so he'll probably stick around as him depth for a while at this point. Who knows? Um, but that's pretty much it for prospects who are pretty close. Um, no one else that I can think of. I mean, you have some of the guys that we drafted, Nicholson, um, Aviles, um, these guys, you know, kind of guys we're looking out for. Nick Stevens here, Nate Stevens, whatever. Um, some interesting prospects coming up, of course, but uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much going to probably be doing it for this episode. Of course, we have lots of pitching injuries this year. Jeff Hoffman, he was good before he got hurt. Um, so is German Marquez, Ryan Helsey is actually going to be back. So we'll, um, I have to make room for him. So we'll do it off screen. And Scott Oberg, a decent reliever for us. He also has a long term sending injury. All those guys should be back next year, though, besides Oberg. So, um, yeah, we'll see um, pretty much what's available in the off season. I don't really have a set plan, so I don't really know what to discuss here. We've got a decent amount of money to play with. Um, but if I had to guess, it would probably be some upgrading on first base. Um, definitely acquiring someone who could play center field because we really haven't had that. And obviously, trying to upgrade any pitching whatsoever, if we could get an international guy that's pretty cheap, that would be uh, very ideal, and I would uh, be extremely um, interested in uh, doing that. So, um, yeah, that's kind of a very rough outline of the plan, of course. Uh, I should have a much better idea um, going into next episode, which should be the off-season video. And we kind of look forward to, you know, building the team more. So, uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I'm not sure when the next video will be out, because, of course, I mentioned... Um, you know, have a lot of classes and stuff, so won't have the most time to make anything, but of course, I'll be itching to play the game sometime soon, of course, uh, at least I'd assume, so uh, I'll see you guys then.